Welcome to Technia TV. I am Dr. Jamuna from Technia Institute of Advanced Studies, working as an associate professor in management. Let's see something related to risk and returns. What is the concept of risk and return? After investing money in a project, a firm wants to get some outcomes from the project. The outcomes or the benefits that the investment generates are called returns. Wealth maximization approach is based on the concept of future value of expected cash flows from a prospective project. So cash flows are nothing but the earnings generated by the project that we refer to as returns. Since fixture is uncertain, so returns are associated with some degree of uncertainty. In other words, there will be some variability in generating cash flows which we can call as risk. Concept of risk. A person making an investment expects to get some returns from the investment in future. However, as future is uncertain, the future expected returns too are uncertain. It is the uncertainty associated with the returns from an investment that introduces a risk into a project. The expected return is the uncertain future return that a firm expects to get from its project. The realized return on the contrary is a certain return that a firm has actually earned. The realized return from the project may not correspond to expected return. This possibility of variation of the actual return from the expected return is termed as risk. Risk is a variability in the expected return from a project. In other words, it is a degree of deviation from expected return. Risk is associated with the possibility that realized returns will be less than the returns that were expected. So, when realization correspond to expectations exactly, there would be no risk. Next thing is elements of risk. Various elements cause a variability in expected returns, which are known as the elements of risk. There are broadly two group of elements classified as systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Let's move on to systematic risk. Business organizations are part of the society that is dynamic. Various changes occur in a society like economic, political and social systems that have influence on the performance of companies and thereby on their expected returns. These changes affect the organizations to varying degrees. Hence, the impact of these changes is system-wide and the portion of total variability in returns caused by such across-the-board factors is referred to as systematic risk. These risks are further subdivided into interest risk and market risk and purchasing power risk. Now let's see the unsystematic risk. The returns of a company may vary due to certain factors that affect only that company. Examples of such factors are raw material scarcity, labor strike, management inefficiency, etc. When the variability in return occurs due to such firm-specific factors, it is known as unsystematic risk. This risk is unique or peculiar to a specific organization and affects it in addition to the systematic risk. These risks are subdivided into business risk and financial risk. 
Now let's move on to measurement of risk. The way we quantify the risk is known as measurement of risk. Two approaches are followed in measurement of risk. Number one, mean variation approach and number two, correlation or regression approach. First, let's see mean variation approach. One is mean variance approach and another is correlation or regression approach. Let's see the mean variance approach first. This approach is used to measure the total risk that is the sum of systematic and unsystematic risks. Under this approach, the variance and standard deviation measure the extent of variability or possible returns from the expected return. This can be calculated by this formula where x base i is possible return, p is probability of return and n is number of possible returns. Next one is correlation or regression method. This method is used to measure the systematic risk. Systematic risk is expressed by beta and is calculated by this formula. So here I, IM that is correlation coefficient between the returns of stock I and the return of the market index. Then sigma M that is standard deviation of returns of the market index and sigma I that is the standard deviation of returns of stock I. Using regression method we may measure the systematic risk. Now concept of return. Return can be defined as the actual income from a project as well as appreciation in the value of capital. Thus, there are two components in return. The basic component or the periodic cash flows from the investment either in the form of interest or dividends and the change in the price of the asset commonly called as a capital gain or loss. The term yield is often used in connection to return which refers to the income component in relation to some price for the asset. The total return of an asset for the holding period relates to all the cash flows received by an investor during any designated time period to the amount of money invested in the asset. It is measured as total return is equal to cash payments received plus price change in assets over the period or purchase price of the asset. In connection with return, we use two terms realized return and expected or predicted return. Realized return is a return that was earned by the firm. So it is historic. Expected or predicted return is the return the firm anticipates to earn from an asset over some future period. So now let's move on to capital asset pricing model which is called CAPM. So what is capital asset pricing model? The capital asset pricing model is a model that describes the relationship between expected return and risk of investing in a security. It shows that the expected return on a security is equal to the risk free return plus a risk premium which is based on the beta of the security. Hope you are clear about risk return and capital asset pricing model. If you want to see more videos like this kindly log on to Technia TV. Thank you.